Hi, this is uh, Mota Masari. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk about Stone Fusion MSP. Uh, our Stone Fusion MSP is uh, targeted toward customers who are either cloud providers or uh, managed service providers. At the same time, uh, for the companies who um, are going to provision storage for different workload or with different departments which they need total isolations between the provisioning of those storage. But at the same time is that um, uh, not only they uh, need that provisioning, uh, they can manage their resources uh, correctly and uh, they can create different type of instances of uh, storage stack uh, and uh, with the data services completely isolated. Uh, so this is the target audience that we have, and I'll explain to you a little bit about that. So Stone Fusion itself is, is a storage stack which has three type of protocols that it supports, or three uh, type of storage, which is one is a SAN storage. And the SAN storage we support is iSCSI. Uh, it's a fiber channel and is a NAS, is a object storage. So object storage is like S3s and uh, um, the Azure blocks. So the iSCSI, the SAN part, is that you can provision it. The NAS part is a scale-out NAS storage, so you can have one instance and or many instances of uh, NAS and they can scale out as a multiple nodes. Or as an object, uh, which would be the S3 Amazon object. So what happens is that if uh, you are a service provider or you are a company that needs to have uh, uh, you know, different SANs instead of buying from different vendors, you can actually uh, get the resources from a, 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 a one platform. And this one platform could be a single node, uh, could be HA node, and could be a scale-out node. So it could be multiple nodes but it would be one platform. And that platform, uh, we have uh, Stone Fusion is as part of that platform, installs on this platform. And it takes the underlying storage, whatever that storage is, is part of that storage, and takes that storage and provision it as a um, uh, different instance of the storage. So you could have another storage, which could be iSCSI, or it could be used, can start another one, could be a NAS, or it could be object storage. So this storage you can divide in different type of storages than you need as a SAN storage, as a NAS storage, as a object storage. And each individual of these storage that you provision from a master SCDM, these are, let's call it client SCDMs. And this as client SCDMs would, uh, would be provisioned from the master SCDM. So if you log it, if the admin or the person who manages these uh, logs into the uh, master SCDM. It would provision, let's say, 10 terabyte of a SAN here and 20 terabyte of um, NAS here or uh, whatever X amount of um, you know, object storage here. And then you, know, you can assign this machine. This has actually become a storage machine. Um, and you can assign it to different client A, let's say. And this would be for client B and so client C or something. So, and you can have multiple of these. It depends on how much resources we have here. And the resources are, there are three resources that you are looking at. Is one CPU, is memory, and it's a storage, the raw storage, right? Raw storage, bunch of disk. So these uh, CPU and memory will determine how big of uh, storage uh, processors you can have and usually it starts with the four cores and eight gig, uh, and then uh, you can have more if you want much more performance. Uh, for example, part of your storage might be SSD storage or NVMe storage or any other storage, and you wanna have faster uh, IOPS or higher IOPS, then you have more CPU, and you can allocate dynamically and change the, the, the resource level under uh, this, um, you know, the, the provisioning of these uh, different machines. And so it's very dynamic and it would dynamically uh, will adjust uh, for, for the clients, you can do that. And each of these 
uh, instances that you do be, being a SAN or a NAS or object storage. Uh, and you have data services associated with that and those services associated go, goes right to the client itself with that, with that storage stack. Uh, that would be a snapshot, encryption, uh, dedupe, uh, replication, synchronous, asynchronous replication uh, to any remote data centers or another appliance in the cloud. We have the same appliance in all Microsoft data centers, so you can actually replicate directly to another, um, to like Azure Cloud uh, to, or, or S3 in Amazon or your own uh, instance of these as a virtual appliance or physical appliance, both could be as a remote uh, storage so you can replicate to it. And it also has tiering capability, it means that you can have a cold tier and hot tier uh, application, and also you can have um, caching uh, for SAN storage. So there's tons of um, you know features that we assign to these uh, 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 machines. Um, so the client can have all those machines, and they have the full management. They have the full login password as an admin to each of these guys, and they can manage their own instance. They can manage own their own data protections and so on and so forth. So they have a full access to that, full uh, responsibility to that. So uh, this way it would be totally isolated from one client to another client being in the, in the, um, in the cloud type of environment, being a uh, uh, managed service providers or you're providing service to somebody else and you need isolation between clients. And this is storage stack is like you know going and buying storage separately from many many entities and putting it there. This is you grow as uh, you you grow as you need it. You can start with a small amount of few terabytes and expand it to petabytes. And so it's very dynamic. And all it is is just need the hardware resources and those are basically CPU memory and hard drives. And uh, then after that um, this. Uh, this particular uh, admin will sit in um, uh, three type of hypervisor support. One is a VMware, and the other one is Hyper-V, and the Zen, and soon would be KVM. So if you get this machine and install it on any of these hypervisor for hypervisor, then all these machines can be deployed uh, on a VMware, basically, uh, and then you can go from there. Um, thank you very much.